Well, firstly, Tim, how are you settling into life in Cork? Yeah, listen, I'm loving it. Um, the setup here is brilliant, so um, delighted to obviously get the opportunity to come down here and um, throw myself uh, head first in. And uh, yeah, the first few weeks have been really good, and looking forward to now um, getting games in, in front of the fans at Turner's Cross. And the squad is coming together nicely now. We've made a few signings, obviously, you've re signed a few players from last season as well. Um, brought in a few experienced guys like Greg Walter, we were just chatting that he's been here before, Sean Murray, guys like that. Are there more to come in? Are you, are you planning to sign much more? Yeah, I think so far we've got the balance. Um, we've got a few good experienced players in. Um, we signed Keen Coleman as well, who's, who's a massive part of things here. And uh, you've got some really exciting young players brought in, but also there's a couple um, current academy players that are exceptional talents that um, are going to feature quite a lot this year and um, yeah again we're uh, probably about four weeks out from the season so we've got another few players to bring in to, to strengthen up a few positions and then we're ready to go. Have you got a few guys in mind already or are you just trying to get things over the line or are you still actively looking? No we're talking we're talking to players it has to be right for the for the club and obviously the fit for the for the lads in the dressing room so far as well and um, again there's there's four weeks to go until um, the start of the season and the most important game is the is the 60th of February so um, obviously we hope to get them in as early as we can but um, we're not in no rush to get players in just for the sake of it we're gonna make sure they're the right ones for the group. And from looking at the squad that you have now what areas do you think you still need to strengthen in terms of positions and so on? Ah, there's a few positions obviously there's um centre forward we're looking for as well we've got Murph there we've got a couple of young lads as well but um, we'll be uh, Bring in a centre forward, um, centre backs in another area. We're going to bring in a player, and again after that, then we look and we'll see what's available. Maybe it's one or two players uh, after that. So, but um, yeah, listen, we're quite happy where we're at at the minute. And pre-season up and running, you uh, you've had the Munster Senior Cup game, obviously, and the Galway game the other day. I know it was a bad result, but was it just about getting guys getting minutes on the pitch? And yeah, listen, ideally, um, it wasn't a great result against Galway. We'd we'd a mad six minutes in the first half where we conceded from uh, two set pieces and uh, deflected cross. And obviously, you don't want that to happen. But the the main thing was um, getting minutes into the legs. No one no one was injured. Uh, they got forty five minutes for most people, sixty for some, um, and that's that's good going on to the next preseason games. Um, it was a bit frustrating because the the pitch cut up quite a lot. It's actually a brilliant surface down in mm -hmm. in Formoy. Um, I don't think he should have gone ahead on the pitch to be honest with you um, and we've done a bit of damage to the pitch but we possibly should have played it on the Astro turf and it probably would have been a better game. And is that what you'd be looking at now, kind of getting it on the right surfaces for the next few preseason games because obviously you've a fairly packed set you have shells to come, Derry, Sligo I think. Yeah we've got a few games coming up but again it's it's for both teams I think um, whenever we're playing the other teams they'll want to be playing football as, on, as well so yeah. it's, it's important to get on the surface, it's difficult to play on Astro turf as well. But um, you've got to get that balance right, and um, obviously we've been playing all our home games this season on grass, so you want to be playing on grass as much as possible as well. But I think the weather showed in the last few weeks; it's been, especially this week, it's been really, really cold, uh, low uh, climate. So it's it's difficult to get onto a grass pitch that isn't going to um, cut up. So again, we look at that and we manage it as the as the games come up. And just looking at the season, then obviously it kicks off in in a month's time or so. But like looking at it overall, the, the teams that you'll be up against in the first division, do you see Cork City as being the, the leading club there, as, as being a club maybe you shouldn't be in the first division? I know that's kind of what people are saying. I know you can never say that about a team, but do you think like the, the objective obviously is to go straight out, win the league and get the club straight back up to the Premier Division? That's the objective, is to, to get the, the, the team to um, back in the Premier Division next year um, by winning the league next season, so for the season coming up. Um, <coughs> we're looking around the league, a lot of teams have strengthened, a lot of teams have... Uh, um, signed well, so listen, it's not going to be easy, but it's um, certainly our ambition to, to go out and win the league. And I'm sure that every other team in the league will be looking at us as the full time team with the probably the biggest budget. So um, we'll be there to be to be knocked off the, the top spot, is what people will be saying. But listen, it's up for us to, to live up to them expectations and uh, flourish in it as well. Who would you see as the biggest threat in the first division? Because I know when Cork City were down there two years ago, you had clubs like Galway and Waterford who had pretty much full time setups as well. but. Of the teams that are there now, who would you identify as being a I big think threat? There's, I think there's a good few teams that have strengthened um, and built on last season as well. So I'd say there'll be uh, multiple teams up near the top of the league challenging. Um, maybe other clubs have pushed the budget out a bit more this year themselves because they see that there isn't two full-time teams in the Premier Division. Um, or sorry, in the First Division, the way there was last year with Waterford and uh, Galway. So uh, listen, I'm thinking it's going to be very competitive and I think there'll be um, a lot of teams competing at the top of the table.
And just finally for me, Tim, looking forward to getting into the, the, the dugout and Furnace Cross with the, with the crowd there and hopefully a big crowd for the first home game and everyone cheering you on from the shed and so on. Yeah, that's it. That's the, it's a special place to, to uh, play football and obviously I, I played down there and um, having that fan base behind you um, and us giving them uh, football to, to cheer on and, and, and be entertained, I think it'll be absolutely special and I can't wait to get going. Thanks, Tim. Cheers. Jim, man, you, you still haven't seen a Cork City goal since you come in. It's been, we talked about when you came in for today, it's been the problem last year. You can get one goal in six matches at the end of the season or something. That's obviously the area, not, not even penalties, like, but, but three penalties and no goal in the Munster Cup. So it's obviously disappointing in that, that, that respect. Like, and it's the area you need more threatening, obviously, isn't it? Yeah, but you understand that's the under a lot of them players are possibly 16, 17 years of age playing against Wilton. And I think if you looked at the game, they deserve to win the game by. Um, multiple goals so again that was a, a good opportunity for me to get to see the, the U team playing and um, some of them did very well and uh, yeah it was, it was it was a good experience for them Um no listen there's going to be no issue with us scoring goals this season Um all the teams that I've managed previously have either been the top scorers in the league or um, in the top two I think in the in the six seasons that I've had as a manager and that won't change next year. Mm, have you had anyone in mind like you as an attacker Jack Doherty what's going with Jack is he injured or? No, Jack's just was a. Uh, he didn't play against Galway. He had a tight hamstring, but um, he's finally trained today, so he should be involved in the games going forward. And again, Jack's Jack's come in. It's not necessarily up for the centre forward to score a lot of goals. I know uh, Keith's done that quite a lot last season. He led the line, but I think when we added uh, players to the squad, I think you get more goals from different positions, and you can't rely on uh, one source for your own, on your goals. And um, I think when you when you see that the, the teams that I've had. Um, goals have come from all over the pitch, and, and that's some, uh, certainly something that will be the same next year. Yeah. Any attacker in mind? Like, have you got someone? No, I'm not going to sit here and start naming people who haven't signed for the club yet. So, um, we'll be talking to multiple people, um, and we'll have targets that we speak to. And if it's right for them and right for us, then then deals will be done. But um, we'll certainly be bringing in another centre forward. Yeah. Have you any regrets? Like, you're playing the U team in the Monster Cup, given that it's a cup competition, and you've got to play, you know, if you're going to run a run in it, get a chance to see more games, more people. No, not really. It's uh, by the time at the end of the second week, you're looking to play a game on Astro Turf um, with uh, only five subs to be allowed to be made. So you, you possibly six players will have to play 90 minutes in the, in the first couple of weeks of pre season. And when you have players working hard um, and are being sore and um, muscles and whatnot, um, and unfortunately, it looks like one of the young lads picked up a bad injury on the Astro Turf. So that sort of um, cemented the reason why I didn't want to put the first team players out after only a couple of weeks. Um, I think it's a poor time to have that fixture, to be honest with you. When it's a competitive game, it shouldn't be um, that early in January. Um, yeah. But no, it, it, it's something else that uh, I've done at previous clubs where it's a great opportunity to see the, the younger players against um, more men, I suppose. And, and some of them done really well. And, and since then, they've been in training with us as well. So, Plenty of experience in, uh, in the team as well, Tim, this year. It's just going to be kind of very important, isn't it? To, to bring the young lads on and in the first team to get out to have that bit of experience. Yeah, that's that's why we've we've targeted a few players that we have and we brought them in. Um, and again, as we said, there's a, there's a lot of talented young players at the club and probably ones that the, the fans haven't seen a great deal of uh, deal of in the first team. And um, that'll be different this season now when um, a couple of them are breaking through now. And I think uh, they're going to be very very excited by these players and especially when you have the more experienced players in the squad um, helping them and, and developing them and bringing them on as well. Yeah, and the, the games you mentioned are coming up against Premier teams. It's going to give uh, players a good chance to, to test themselves. And what, what can we expect like, from our teams in those matches? Listen, we're looking to obviously set up defensively when we don't have the ball. Um, and then when we get the ball to try and capitalise on uh, having it and, and being dangerous going forward. And uh, again, it's it's a difficult one when, when you're a Premier Division team and you do pre-season and you play a lot of First Division teams, you might be successful in it and, and, and score a lot of goals and um, win the games and then when you go into the season you might have a false sense of belief of where you're at and I think it's similar with the first division teams um, you could go down the route of getting um, teams from the Munster Senior League and, and doing well against them but they mightn't be as good as some of the teams in the first division and then you, you come unstuck when you come against them so to play against the level of opposition that we are going to play against um, we'll learn a lot more from that than we will um, in games that we might uh, win easily. Yeah, just the last one for me, Tim. Like, how important is it if the ground running when the season does start now? You know, the crowd turns cross, obviously. That's it. It's, it's, listen, there's no, uh, 
there's no hiding place down here. There shouldn't be. Um, the expectations are high, and, and so they should be as well. So, um, yeah, listen, we're looking forward to the next three or four weeks of work, and then we can't wait to get going on uh, the 16th of February in, in Turner's Cross. Good luck. Thanks, Cheers, Brian. Thanks. Uh, Coach, this is Coach Gaffey. Yeah. Uh, question from Polish and Polish. Uh, we saw the Sobinski uh, in first squad last week twice. Is there any chance to bring him in first squad for this season? And what about uh, Shitska Patrick? Who's that? Is Patrick. Uh, Patrick, Patrick. Patrick. Yeah, no, I'm um, Patrick. Yes, listen again. That's the that's the reason why we're having these. Uh, we want to, we want to watch the the team obviously play against um, Wilton, which they've done very well. And um, yeah, it's it's. Very much so. The squad this season is not going to be 25, 30 players. So I'll be leaning heavily on the um, academy players. And um, again, Noah done quite well in the game against Wilton, and he came on obviously against um, Galway as well last week. Or sorry, during the week and done very well. So um, yeah, there's, these players are going to be a part and extension of my first team, and um, hopefully to keep doing well with the, with the 20s. I keep saying 19s because it's changed with the 20s, and um, I'm sure they'll feature this season in the, in the first team. Box. They have uh, three Polish players last week, last, last season. Uh, are you looking for someone in the Polish market as well? Yeah, listen, we look at uh, we look at no, the whole market. I know it's it's something that obviously uh, Radkowski and a few of the other Polish players that come over um, and done quite well in the in the Premier Division. But um, yeah, we have to we have to look everywhere for players to be honest. So um, we won't be ruling out players from from anywhere for. For no reason, so um, yeah, it's it's a market that seems to be uh, growing in popularity as well. So um, possibly we'll be able to get players from there as well in the future. We could get a full stadium. So. <laughs> <laughs> the owner will be happy with that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Right, Eddie, nice. the Zoom lads here. Do you want to come in with something? Yeah, question there, Tim. That's okay. Very good. How are you? Well. Yeah. Um, just ask you about Joe Brian Whitmarsh, um, Tim, just in terms of was there any chance of keeping him? I know, like, um, Trotter managed, managed to keep Evan Weir to the summer. Was there ever a chance of keeping him, or was it safe for he was going to go? I mean, listen, I spoke to Joe, obviously, and um, there was no there was no uh, worry of him was losing him somewhere else inside the country. But I think when Southampton came in and he went over and, and he seen the place and um, he done well in the talks that he had with them, it was a very difficult decision for him to make um, to stay behind with, with, with us obviously and I think when the, a club of that size come in I think his, his head probably was turned and uh, you can't blame him either um, but no that discussion never I never got to that stage of uh, getting him back on loan until the summer and I think um, possibly in a little bit of a different position than, than Evan I know Evan signed for Walsall um, and they've got a link with with Trotter which means he's gone back there until the summer until they're doing pre-season I think Joe was more Sought after. I think there's more than one club that were interested in him, so um, they wanted him over straight away. And just how, how do you think he'll do, Tim? I mean, it's been very hard for a lot of players to, to I suppose, Australia is one of the obvious examples, you know, top player in the league, the FBI and player of the year, and, and struggled with Motherwell, like, you know, Scottish League very well. How do you think Joe will do? Does he need a bit of time? Is it a case where he needs kind of the year, 18 months to bed in, or how do you think Joe will do? Yeah, listen, I, I happened, had the experience of um, managing Joe on a, on a daily basis and I would have only seen him from um, as an opposition point of view and he would have been a player that you'd, you'd uh, point at, at, at before games and you'd speak about him and the talent that he has and um, you're hoping that he goes over there and uh, he can flourish and, and develop and improve and um, please God for, for himself um, and even for the Cork City fans to see a player leaving the club to, to go over and do really well and, and hopefully he can he can hit the ground running and, and we'll see him making big strides over there. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. All right. Hey, Tim. John Fallon here. John, how are you? You well? Good, and you? Not so bad. Good. Um, just just a few, uh, if you don't mind. Just when you came in, I think the end of November, um, had you anyone under contract? Uh, Connor Drynan was under contract, yeah. And a, couple of, a, clean slate and a couple of the young lads, yeah. Yeah, right. and I don't think Keith had just gone that day or the day before. Like the Aaron Bulger, was he always? Did he always want to play in the Premier? Did you have a chat with him? I listen. I, I spoke to Aaron as well, and um, we spoke to a few players. Obviously, we want to <coughs> try and keep. And um, Aaron obviously got offers from from multiple clubs in the Premier Division. And um, as much as I would have loved to have keeping uh, Aaron, it was it was one of them ones that he's obviously looked at the offer from Pats and the. 
the conversations he had with John and it's something that he fancied. So again, it's a difficult position for, for me as the, as the manager of a first division club to go in when if it had been the day after the season finished, you could possibly have a conversation straight away. But I got it maybe three or four weeks after the season had finished. And at that stage, a lot of players had had conversations elsewhere. So it's a hard sell then to try and get them to stay in the, in the first division if they've had um, offers from the Premier Division as well. Yeah, like how, how are you finding that sort of balance and that, you know, like, okay, it's not Premier Division season, but you're a Premier Division club that say, are you able, you know, are you getting sort of the marginal decisions there or some of them just convinced they just want to play in their top flight? Well, to be honest with you, John, some of them won't get an opportunity to play for Cork City in the top flight. So um, it's it's a massive club and uh, people have to think long and hard about turning down a chance to come and play here. So um, we're hoping that we have a good season next year and we return to the Premier Division. And then there's there's very few places, if any, that's a better place to play in the Premier Division than here. So um, I still think it's a massively attractive um, opportunity to come and play for, for City in the, in the first division. And... That's the type of thing we're looking at. We're looking at trying to sign players that we feel can um, can play in the Premier Division with us next year as well. You're thinking like maybe a two-year kind of cycle. Listen, some... obviously, first off, I'm I'm in here to to win the league this season, and that's sort of me sole objection, but uh, objective. Sorry, but it's it's one of them ones that if we can do that, we're certainly planning for for um, another year's time where we don't want. 12 months time to have another turnover of 10, 12, 15 players in the squad and I don't think that's beneficial to the club so um, it's something that we'd be looking at and making sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah and just on that, like, the loan market, does, does that influence that? Like I know you, I think you get four slots, I think Sean is one, is he, like, would you intend filling all those or is it a case that you prefer to have permanent? No, listen, it's, it's, I think the loan market's uh, massively beneficial to uh, both parties. If you can go to, let's say, somewhere in England and, and, and we can offer first-team football and the experience of playing in front of uh, really good crowds on, uh, in, a decent, in a decent stadium. So, um, and then the trade-off for that is, the financial aspect is, we, we might get them players for a lot cheaper because uh, the clubs in England might need uh, the financial support, but they want the, the first-team experience. So... It's certainly beneficial to two uh, parties, but I don't think we have to, um, or there's a need to sort of utilise all four of your loans. Um, I don't think we'd be using all four of the loans this season. And um, But they are there that you might get something up later in the window where uh, financially it makes sense for us and obviously makes sense for, for the club as well uh, in England or whoever else it is who's, who's loaning us to us. And just finally, you mentioned about the competition and the division, like UCD, They've always been competitive uh, in the fourth division. Like, would you regard them as a as a full time club or like a semi sort of, you know, like a hybrid in terms of most of our students are out there, a lot of them play Collingwood Cup and all that. So, will you probably get a lot of access to them? Would they be the nearest to you in terms of having that? I don't know. I think I think the setup at UCD. I think. Um... From a point of view, in 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 where we are in, in, in the football ladder in Ireland, I think it's an unbelievable platform to have where um, young men are getting to um, put an education behind them and qualifications, and then by the time that they're ready to to move either to other League of Ireland clubs or away from Ireland, they seem to be the ones that have the the experience, the old head on the on the young shoulders, I suppose, and um, maybe have less pressure in their in their life to make it as a footballer because they have a a secondary career on the on the back burner for when they're finished playing. And I think if you see the players who have been successful um, in the League of Ireland, a lot of them in the Dundalk side set up and um, Shamrock Rovers in the last lot of years who've won a lot of league titles have come through that avenue as well. Um, and I think that is it is massively beneficial to have that platform here in Ireland. And I think if we develop the, the league and further down the line, infrastructure and everything else, I think if more clubs tied into education as well as... Uh, just full-time football, I think um, it would benefit football in this country massively. But again, listen, when you're looking at UCD, they, they always have um, fit squads and, and, and young players that are are talented. Um, they go through cycles as well where they where they might get the, the players later into their degrees, where it's the third or fourth year that they're very strong. And at the minute, Willie's probably at the start of that cycle again. Um, they lost a lot of players last year, but again, you know they're going to be well-organised and they play good football the way UCD always do. And I'm sure Willie will have them competitive and, and, and competing as well next season.
Not things been brilliant so far. Uh, listen, it's um, it's different. I'm obviously living down here uh, every night. I'm, I'm in I'm in Cork, so it's uh, it's interesting. The family are still back up in Mead, but um, that's football. It's a part that I've done it previously as a player, and, and I'm actually loving being back in and, and be rejuvenated again after um, managing in the Pats and had six months out. And to be given the opportunity to manage this club is is, is a massive honour for myself, and it's something that I'm really looking forward to. And um, the training facilities we have here, and obviously the the stadium and um, the fan base, it's 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 a, it's a huge job in this country, and um, and it's like I can't wait to get going. Do you, do, do you kind of sense that there's something bigger, maybe you get recognised more often or stopped more often in the street, things like that? No, I just think it's 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 a huge. Uh, it's obviously the second biggest city in the country, and um, Cork City is the. Is the, is the main football attraction here so it, it is that side of things I've, I've previously obviously played in uh, Edinburgh where I was one of the big clubs and you have, you have a massive um, reach I suppose with fan base in that city as well and um, Kilmarnock was it's, a, it's obviously a, I think it's a town of 70,000 people so the football club is the main thing in that town so you'd be used to that as well and but I am I'm finding the, the um, living down here I've obviously got uh, relatives down here my brother lives down in Bantry as well that we went down to the other night so um, yeah listen I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it um, but again it's it's just waiting until the season starts and getting Friday nights uh, games and Turner's Cross and getting victories under the belt and is what I'm really looking forward to Similarities between Cork and say Edinburgh in terms of I suppose the focus on the football team No there is like it's, I think there's there's a massive focus on the uh, on a, on city in this obviously obviously down here so uh, it's probably on a Friday night if, if there's not a game at Tala or maybe I don't know it's probably the biggest attendance in the country so it's or in, in any sport nearly uh, you'll find that it could be the biggest attendance that weekend so it's it's a huge draw um, but again it's it's I'm down here to try and get a feel good factor about the place again it was a, it was a tough season last season for the people that were here but um, listen we've got to look forward now and that plan uh, started two weeks ago and we'll be building towards the, the first game of the season against Kerry. I agree you didn't do any Damien Duff style army drills uh, for pre-season did you? No we haven't done that like that yeah. Yes? Yes. 